Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I would like to also thank AWS for giving us the opportunity to speak a little bit about SiloDB here today, and I would like also to express our deepest gratitude to our estimated customer, TripAdvisor, and in particular, Jim Fulling for all the efforts that he did and put in order to share a bit about TripAdvisor history here today. So, my name is Felipe Mendes, I am a technical director here at SiloDB, and I flew all the way down from Brazil just to be here today, and uh, which means, sorry for the bad English accent in advance. So, uh, just to set the scene here real quick, I want to quickly recap uh, the challenges faced with data intensive applications. So, data intensive applications are applications which really require sustaining high throughputs and need to sustain predictable low latencies, often within single digit milliseconds. Uh, one of the problems, one of the things that often happened when you are working with data intensive apps is that with growth, costs eventually start to become a natural concern. And that often forces organizations into a trade-off between costs and user experience. Uh, what do I mean by that? For example, if you prioritize your user experience, then you will be required to uh, deploy additional infrastructure to keep your latencies uh, and performance under control. Likewise, as you try to optimize for costs, uh, you might end up risking the user experience and risk your deployment stability against sudden and often unpredictable traffic spikes. So, this is basically the context where SiloDB actually fits in. We are the only highly available distributed database in the market which is optimized for workloads requiring high throughput and predictable low latencies with a special focus on infrastructure cost savings. For example, uh, sustaining high throughput with SiloDB uh, with a small three node cluster running in EC2, uh, you can get one million operations per second uh, and single digit millisecond latencies. With that, SiloDB is capable of delivering five times high tr higher throughput and 20 times lower latencies compared with other databases. This translates to uh, up to 75% less infrastructure spends for your organization. SiloDB is also fully compatible with both the Apache Cassandra and DynamoDB uh, APIs, and we are available both as a managed cloud solution via SiloDB Cloud, as well as a self-managed deploy anywhere enterprise deployment. With regards to our relationship with AWS, we are an AWS ISV Accelerate partner for many years, we partnered with AWS in testing the AWS i4i instances ahead of their launch, and uh, we also partnered uh, together with AWS on demonstrating the superior Graviton performance in AWS EC2. We are a Graviton ready uh, partner, and of course we are also available within the AWS marketplace. So, you might be wondering, how are people using SiloDB? Well, beyond TripAdvisor uh, today, we also have companies like Disney Plus and Hulu relying on SiloDB in order to service their media streaming services. And SiloDB has actually supported the Super Bowl for many years in a row now. Discord is using SiloDB to connect millions of users in real time around the world. And then we have companies like Epic Games, EA Games, which use SiloDB to deliver seamless gaming experiences to their users. And of course, we have other companies like Starbucks. If you guys like coffee, if SiloDB goes down, you guys are unable to buy coffee any longer. That's basically <laughs> how critical SiloDB is. So you may be wondering, uh, okay, all of this sounds cool. How do I know when and whether SiloDB makes sense for me? So we brought the chart for you here today where the y-axis represents throughput and the x-axis represents latencies. And we can see that we have a very large cluster of users in the top left-hand side, uh, workload, workloads ranging between 100 to half a million operations per second, requiring between single digits to less than 20 millisecond P99 response times. And this is, uh, in fact, the, exactly the cluster which TripAdvisor is part of. 
uh, single digit millisecond P99 response times and close to half a million operations per second. All that said, folks, I'd like now to introduce you to Jim Pulley, Data Engineering Team Lead for AI Servicing Products at TripAdvisor. Jim, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, Felipe. Hey, everybody, my name's Dean Poulin. I am a data engineering team lead on the AI services and products team at TripAdvisor. I've been with the company for about three and a half years, and I've been primarily working on our real-time user personalization platform. I have over two decades of experience working in software engineering as well as management roles, and I've had the opportunity to work at a variety of different companies, including some small startups, mid-sized businesses, as well as large corporations and I'm very passionate about building high-scale, low-latency web applications. Before I dive into the technical details, I wanted to give you a quick snapshot of TripAdvisor and the scale that we operate at. Uh, we were founded in 2000, and we have become a global leader in travel and hospitality. Last year, we generated over 1.8 billion in revenue, and we have over 2,800 employees all over the world, helping hundreds of millions of travelers plan their perfect trip every month. TripAdvisor.com handles over two billion requests every day from up to 50 million travelers searching for the best hotels, attractions, restaurants, and experiences. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we deliver highly relevant recommendations with our ML model serving platform, our custom feature store, uh, the user event tracking platform, and ScyllaDB on AWS, maintaining millisecond latencies with this high scale. Imagine you're planning your next trip, your next summer vacation, like you do every year. You go to tripadvisor.com, you start searching, and before you know it, you're already seeing spot-on recommendations that seem personalized to your own interests. How do we do that? That's what I'm here to show you today. I will cover three key areas. Our system architecture, the technologies powering the platform, and how ScyllaDB plays a critical role in our solution. Uh, I want you to walk away with two things a deeper understanding of how we do this, and ideas for how you might be able to do this. TripAdvisor.com runs on hundreds of independently scalable microservices in Kubernetes, on-prem, and in uh, Amazon EKS. Uh, our ML model serving platform is exposed through one of these microservices. Uh, this gateway uh, abstracts over 100 ML models from the client microservices. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to run A-B tests, uh, to find the best models uh, using our experimentation platform. The ML models are primarily developed by our data scientists and our machine learning engineers. Uh, they use Jupyter Notebooks on Kubeflow, and uh, they're managed and trained using MLflow, and we deploy on Selden Core on Kubernetes. Our custom feature store provides features to our ML models, enabling them to make accurate predictions. The feature store primarily serves user features and static features. Static features are stored in Redis because they don't change very often. Uh, we run data pipelines daily to load data from our offline data warehouse into our feature store as static features. User features, on the other hand, are uh, served in real time through a platform called Visitor Platform. Uh, we execute dynamic CQL queries against ScyllaDB and we do not need a caching layer because ScyllaDB is so fast. Our feature store serves up to five million uh, static features per second and half a million user features per second. So what is a feature in ML models or in machine learning? Features are input variables to the ML models that are used to make a prediction. So some example of static features are awards that a restaurant has won, uh, amenities offered by a hotel, like free Wi-Fi, pet friendly, or fitness center. User features are collected in real time as users browse around the site, and we store them in ScyllaDB so we can get lightning fast queries. Some examples of user features are the hotels viewed over the last 30 minutes, uh, restaurants viewed over the last 24 hours, or reviews submitted over the last 30 days. Uh, here's a quick look at the technologies powering our visitor platform. At the core, we rely on ScyllaDB. We use Java-based Spring, Spring Boot microservices to expose the, the platform to our clients. That is also, this is deployed on AWS ECS Fargate. 
We run Apache Spark on Kubernetes for our daily data retention jobs, our offline to online jobs. We use those to load data from our offline data, data warehouse into ScyllaDB so that they're available on the live site. We also use Amazon Kinesis for processing streaming user tracking events. This graphic shows how data flows through our platform uh, in four stages. Produce, ingest, organize, and activate. Data is produced by our website and our mobile apps. Uh, some of that data includes our cross-device user identity graph, behavior tracking events like page views and clicks, and streaming events that go through Kinesis. Kinesis get loaded into our platform. We also have uh, audience segmentation that gets loaded into our platform. The microservices are used to ingest and organize this data. And the data in ScyllaDB is stored in two key spaces. The visitor core key space, which contains the visitor identity graph. And the visitor metric key space contains facts and metrics, the things that the people did as they browsed the site. We use daily ETL processes to maintain and clean up the data in the platform. And we produce daily stamped data products into our offline data warehouse that are then available for other integrations and other data pipelines to use in their processing. Visitor platform microservices handle up to 40,000 requests per second organizing and processing this data. Our user identity graph has over 2.1 billion unique visitors. And our visitor platform stores about 9 terabytes of data in ScyllaDB. And we have over 125 terabytes stored in our offline data warehouse. And this is just one piece of TripAdvisor's data. So why do we have two separate databases? Our online database is focused on the real-time live website traffic. ScyllaDB fills this role with providing very low latencies and high throughput. We use short-term TTLs to prevent the data in the online database from growing indefinitely. And our data retention jobs ensure that we only keep user activity data for real visitors. TripAdvisor.com gets a lot of bat bot traffic, and we don't want to store their data and try to personalize bots, so we delete and clean up all that data. Um, our offline data warehouse retains historical data used for reporting, uh, creating other data products, and for training our ML models. We don't want large-scale offline data processes impacting performance of our live site. So we have two separate databases used for that purpose. So some of the microservices on our visitor platform that we use, we have actually five microservices. I'm showing the top four here. Visitor Core manages the cross-device user identity graph based on cookies and device IDs. Visitor Metric is our query engine. And that provides us with the ability for exposing facts and metrics for specific visitors. We use a domain-specific language called Visitor Query Language, or VQL. And an example of the VQL there is on the slide. That gives you the ability to see the um, latest commerce click facts over the last three hours. Visitor Publisher and Visitor Saver uh, handle the write path, so writing data into the platform. Uh, we store data in ScyllaDB, but we also store data and stream it into our offline data warehouse. Uh, and we do that with Amazon Kinesis. And there is a fifth service called Visitor Composite. It is used for uh, batch processing so that our clients can send batches of data as well as the visitors to be able to make that call in one, in one call. Uh, and we take care of the behind the scenes of saving the data. This graph illustrates how our microservice latencies remain stable over time. The average latency is only 2.5 milliseconds, and our three nines is under 12.5 under milliseconds. This is impressive performance given that we handle over 1 billion requests per day. Our microservice clients have strict latency requirements. 95% of the calls must complete in 12 milliseconds or less. If they go over that, then we will get paged and have to find out what's going on impacting latencies. This is a snapshot of ScyllaDB, the performance over a three-day period of time. At peak, ScyllaDB is handling 340,000 operations per second, including writes and reads and deletes. The CPU is hovering at only 21%. This is high scale in action. ScyllaDB delivers microservice microsecond writes 
and millisecond reads for us. This level of blazing fast performance is exactly why we chose ScyllaDB. Uh, this slide, uh, it will show you how we partition data into ScyllaDB. The visitor metric key space has two tables, facts and raw metrics. The primary key on facts is the visitor GUID, the fact type, and the created at date. The composite partition key is the visitor GUID and the fact type. And the clustering key is the created at date, which allows us to sort the data in partitions by date. The attributes column that you can see there contains a JSON object representing the event that occurred there. And the type column you can see has the search fact or the page view fact or the audience metric. And uh, some, example, some example types of those is, as you, as you can see, a search term or bookings. And we use the leveled compaction strategy because it's optimized for range queries. And it also handles high cardinality very well. So you'll actually see there that every user has a lot of different facts stored about their activity. And it's also better for read-heavy workloads. We do about two to three times more reads than writes. So again, why ScyllaDB? We started with Cassandra on-prem, but we had some challenges. It required dedicated operations support in order for us to manage the database, upgrades, backups, and all of that. Uh, we also had uh, impacts to performance from high garbage collection. So, and that was primarily impacting the tail latencies, so the P999 and the 49s. So we looked at a hosted solution to solve the operations issues and also performance. And Scylla Cloud stuck out as, a, as the primary option there. They offered fully managed database operations and uh, much higher performance over Cassandra, leveling out those tail latencies for us. We migrated from Cassandra to Scylla Cloud following their dual write strategy. That allowed us to migrate with zero downtime while we're handling 40,000 operations or requests per second. Later, we migrated from Scylla Cloud to the other offering that Scylla now has, which is Scylla's bring your own account model, where you can actually have Scylla deploy uh, the Scylla DB into your own AWS account. This gave us improved uh, application performance, as well as better data privacy. This diagram shows what Scylla's BYOA deployment looks like. So in the center of the diagram, you can see a six node Scylla DB cluster that is running on EC2. And then there's two additional EC2 instances. One of them is the Scylla monitor, which gives us Grafana dashboards, as well as Prometheus metrics. The Scylla manager takes care of infrastructure automation, like triggering backups and repairs. And Scylla DB, with this deployment, was able to be co-located very close to our microservices to give us even lower latencies and uh, much higher throughput and performance. So wrapping up today, I'm confident that you have a better understanding of our architecture, the technologies that power the platform, and how Scylla DB plays a critical role in allowing us to handle this extremely high scale. Thank you so much for your time today, and I'll hand it back over to Felipe. Thank you so much, Eugene. Thank you so much for taking the time to share about how to provide yep.